So all those darks going in. Just patting them around on the edge there. And as you pat them around here, they kind of mix with the blue underneath as well, giving some even more greens. I need to keep some of this going down in here too, and, and I'm just going to use the side of my, you know, a, a very loose scrabbly motion with the with my palette knife down here. And it's not quite so dark down here, so I, I picked up that other colour I made to get those colours in. I haven't made enough of it, it's, you need more than you think, so here I go with the blue ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre, mixing them up and adding in some of the body. And again, don't mix them all up, just let some of it mix on the, on the um, board. So just patting those on to get a vegetative feel to it, you know, little bits of leaves and so on. And then I can take some of this really browny one and pat that in as well, down here at the bases. I can start taking some of the other colours and add those in over the top. Now remembering which way the sun's coming, the sun is coming from this side, so I'm adding more of the lighter colours from this side. I'm just flicking them around. so that they have the semblance of little leaves and twiggy bits sticking out. Down um, this one. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, 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 dab. Sorry, I almost broke into song then, didn't I? My children would not be happy. They do not like my singing. Okay, so I'm keeping doing that, trying to mix it up a bit. So I could also just take some straight blue, give it a little bit of the gel, and add some straight blue on top of some of those shadows too. And again, that will help add some variation. I can add it over here to the dark side and because I've already put that light one on as I add it in it's just going to mix in underneath so it won't come out straight blue. It'll add some variation because of the other colours that it's mixing with as I dab it on. It sort of organically mixes on the board. Just be careful, and you can fix this later by glazing, that you don't allow too much of the white board to show through. So mixing that around. Uh, down here, it's a lower sort of shrubby thing, so I'm making that a rounder shape like so as I come through there to indicate that it's going to be around a lower growing shrub, and I'll, I'll fix that up with some more mark work later. So I'm establishing some of the shapes there. Um, they'll, they'll all be a little bit different. So this one's going to get some sort of pulled up shapes. It's a different sort of shrub than the other one, so I'm just pulling up the edges of it a bit so it's a little bit more spiky. Pulling up some of the shadows in a little bit more spiky way. Just using the palette knife to, to give different effects on the bushes. This one was all grassy. Down here there's some more little bushes and they might be easier for me to put in with a round brush. So now I'm just um, picking up some of these colours and dabbing in some of the bushes down here.
with the brush shapes. I want to get a bit of sunlight on these two. So I'm using some of that green gold just straight and neat. And it's still not enough, so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the green gold, and just make it a little bit more gold on the tips there. I don't want to really start introducing bright yellows into this. It's not the look of it. I could get some cadmium yellow light, but that's not. I want it to be a much more earth-toned painting, so I'm not even going to go there. So if I want to get it even lighter, I could try a little touch of Naples yellow going in there, and that'll lighten up the green quite a lot. I can just try putting some of those little dabby bits on there. I could even try some of the Naples yellow with that uh, sienna colour to give it a warm bit of sunlight on the edges. See how I'm dabbing it on over here as well. That might all continue later once that's a little bit more dry. If you want to blend it in, keep going while it's wet if you want to um, let it dry a little bit so you can just add them on as highlights, just let it dry a bit. Over here I've got those grasses that I had and what I'm going to do for that is mix up a pile of colours here. I'm going to have some of this which I've already got mixed up, the dark one. I'll just leave that in a nice little pile like that so it's easy for the um, palette knife to go into. Then I want to have some more yellowy colours, so in comes, I'm going to put it down here, so it's a sort of a yellowy green. And then I want a much lighter colour, so down here I'm keeping the Naples yellow, but I'm adding in some of the your structure to structure gel to that. Then I can just start taking some of this, putting a pile on, and start pulling out little bits through it. Take another pile of the lighter one, bring it up through there. And then just use the tip of the palette knife to pull it out. Mixing the colours as they go, bringing some highlights through. I can take the berry light, put some of that on, drag that through, and see I've got it on the back there, I'll just take it off again, a little bit more up here at the very tips, and then I turn it over so that I've got a fresh clean, and I'm not going to contaminate it with that. Just pulling those out, those grasses, varying the strokes that I'm using in the grasses so that they naturally and some of the as you're flicking it through you're lifting all the paint right down to that gesso at the base of it and that's okay because it um, it's giving you highlights and lovely fine lines there so Got the grush, grushes, the grasses, the grasses there, and they're coming up through that very dark patch there to give us some nice highlights. 
against the, the very dark shadowed areas. So you, you can do it with brushes as well, but you, it's hard to get those very fine lines so easily with the brushes. So that's given me some grass there and I can work back into that as I want to. Down in my trees down here, they just need a little bit more um, shadow in them, right underneath them there. So I'm mixing up a bit of the purple back in with the ultramarine, tiny touch of this red colour and then just making a very, a few very uh, deep shadows around that tree which will help to show up the sunlit bits when I get them all in and underneath it and then back up into it this way so just adding in some real shadows into that, those shrub bits down there. And some of that purpley colour can go up in here as well to add a few more bits of um, shadow into these ones. Um, I've gone back to the brush here. So you can mix up your brush and your uh, palette knife. You don't have to just stick to one. And I'm going to make that adding a bit more of the texture. I want it a bit purpler and a bit redder. There we go. So just adding a little bit of shadow bits into there. Some little shadow bits coming around there. Thinking all the time that the sun's coming from that direction, so but just building up a little bit of form in these shrubby bits. And I'm going to add a little bit of that purple into the base of these grasses too. Again using my palette knife to pull them out. Over on this side, it's all quite light, um, so I need to add some sparkle back into there. And I've got uh, all the trees back there to deal with, so I could go for, with my brush back there. So the rounded brush, now that I put the, the um, main darks in, and I'm going to add a little bit of the... green gold to that burnt sienna and a touch of that gel sorry it's to the raw sienna and then I'm going to start just dabbing in some highlights on these trees there they're still fairly dark but on the tops of them I want them to have a little bit of light So just putting those tops of the trees in. I can pull some of the dark up into the mix them around a little bit. But I'll leave a few a little bit of the sea showing through some of the, the tops of those trees too. which I'm not always good at, you know, we're good at some bits of our paintings and not so good at the other. I'm often not good at leaving enough um, sky holes. I have to go back and put them in. So, getting the sunlit top of the trees there. 
maybe a little bit over here in this this paddock here and these ones and then I need to do the ones up here so they're just getting the touches of colour up here so I could be doing this with a palette knife I could be doing it with a brush I wanted to show you both ways and you can see sometimes it's more um, yellowy colour yellowy gold green sometimes it's mixing in with the the deeps and darks underneath it to give it a, a yet another value so adding in a bit of the darks down here for the bases a little bit of shadow work there going onto the grasses as well I feel that that's very bright and that's maybe not quite bright enough so what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the of this colour and mix it in there with maybe a touch of the red the green gold just because I thought it was getting a little bit too the difference between them was a little bit too much so just modifying that down so you just need to keep an eye on that as you go and see if if it's working for you or not. And then I could uh, tone this down a little bit more too by just adding a little bit of the some more of the yellow into it. Yellow, um, sorry, the, the raw, raw um, sienna. Just so it's not quite so light and bright. And as it curves over, it can even get a bit of the a bit of green in it as well in some spots. I think I might have lost it now by doing that, but I still do have a nice sunlit edge along there. So let's say it's okay. I need it to be a little bit more shadowy behind there, so I'm taking some of this um, purpley mix and putting it as a little shadow along there, going back up to to suggest that that is curving over. So we've got some very good value shifts there. Oh, down here on the very edge I want to give a little flick of light. On the curve of that path. So I'm just going for the pure Naples. Give a little rim of light there. And then bring it up along the edge of the path there to suggest a little bit of light on the path. And then I want to flick in some little grasses there. I could do that with cleaning off my palette knife and picking up a bit of that Naples yellow and pulling it up to grasses or I could use a very fine brush and just flick up some grasses right along the edge and again it's going to pick up a little bit of the colours underneath but that just gives you variety in them. You don't want it to all be Naples yellow. So instead of mixing it on my palette here, I'm mixing it by painting directly into the wet paint. So I'm just delicately pulling it up with a very thin brush there. All the way along there, because the grasses go all the way along there. I've got a couple of important elements to go in here. I've got the poles to go in. They haven't gone in yet. I want to add a little bit more these areas 
of shrubby things because they're a more rounder shape. You're going to get a little bit of lights in them as well. I'm just dabbing them in to suggest some other sort of vegetation back there. Dabbing it along. It's much lower growing than these ones and that's why it's just getting dabbed in this round kind of fashion. And I will have to do a bit more work on it once I've got the poles in because it comes over the top of some of the poles. Just a few touches of that green gold in amongst it as well. A few little bits of the red colour, that burnt sienna. Again, just allowing it to all mix. On the, the the board here. And I can take some of the darks as well here and just add a few of those in now and then. I could use my little palette knife if I wanted to to put in flicks as well because you can see they create a different kind of texture on there. I take it and I just pat it and dab it and I get an entirely different texture than I did with the brush. So worth trying a few different ways of putting on your foliage to get different effects. That needs a little bit more light so I'm just taking a little bit of straight Naples yellow and trying the dabbing technique with that to get a few highlights on some of those areas. You can let your imagination run wild here and put in whatever kind of shrubby shapes you like because you can't really see terribly well. I know what they were from being there but you can make them whatever you want to suit your composition. If you want a few highlights up there against the darks, by all means jab them in. So now I've got a few highlights along there and I might add a couple more of those highlights just on this tree here. Just a few sunlit strokes. touches where the, the sun's catching on some of those leaves. So I've built up quite a complex uh, suggestion of vegetation there. I've got the grasses here and here. I've got the sunlit path. This is fairly well dried off. What I want to do there is just put a little glaze of a more purpley colour across there for the shadows. So I'll clean off my brush um, and just using some of that purple, what I want to do for that is add in a tiny touch of the gloss medium, so the one that makes it flow a bit. And then I'm going to just add in some of the purple through there. I might need it to be slightly more purple. Let's take some of that. See if I can make it a little bit. I've picked up a little bit too much of the under there, so I'm going to have to make it a little bit thicker purple there. To try. I don't want that little shape, so just flicking that around. So I'm quite happy for this not to be a smooth glaze because 
it's a rocky kind it's a different kind of path it's it's not all even I don't want the water in it so I'm drying the brush and just taking some more of the purple with a touch of that red and adding that into the shadowed areas as we go down and you can see that it's got some texture there in the shadows then you come out to that lovely nice rim down there which is probably too wide and I might need to make it slightly narrower there so it really just, just rim that So now I've got a lovely edge of sunlight along there, some little sunlit grasses, uh, the foliage through here, the trees back there. I've now got the posts to put in and the lighthouse uh, and it's almost finished. So what I want to do is just I'm debating whether I actually do want to put the dry off slightly and now I'm going to be uh, doing the lighthouse and those posts. So the posts are going to be a nice wood, wooden sort of colour, very light on one side though and um, quite dark on the other so what I'm going to do is mix it quite dark with a little bit of that Mars black and the Sienna's. Just mix that up quite dark. And I'm going to use a different palette knife because I find this hard sometimes to manipulate because of that. And what I'm looking for is this one, which is much easier because it doesn't have the curved edge and so on. So I'm just going to take that. In fact, I might even do. that and I want to have one come in like so about that high in fact what I'm going to do is get a much darker mix that's much darker it really needs to stand out against there still not dark enough one post. Just going to get a little bit more off. <coughs> the one downside I find of this palette, the worlds in this palette is it's sometimes it's hard to get the paint out unless you're using a brush. So I'm just going to whack a bit on there straight out of the tube of my Mars Black. And because it's, I've put it on top of the other colour, there's going to be a couple of colours mixing into it now. This one is a little bit taller. Like so. Uh, tallest one here. I'm going to just put a little bit taller there. Now, it needs to be taller. I'm just taking the brush this stage to put in how tall it is now. I might even just use the brush for these. I didn't really want to take it so far down into there so I'm just pushing it up while I can before it dries off. And I'll build the grasses around the base of that again and then it starts to get uh, smaller as we go over here. They start to go down the hill so uh, 
there it is a little bit shorter and the short oh. I accidentally flipped some on there with my brush so I'm just picking that up and I'll put on some repair colors there slightly better and instead of flicking around that I'm just going to use that one to suggest the pole there pole there so there's my poles now they need the light side of them so this is going to be the lighter side of them I'm just edging it up. Just have a nice steady hand while you do this. Poles go round, so I'm just trying to give it that round shape. should be able to get it by going like that with the palette knife. Just giving it a round kind of shape. But I do need to get to the nice light edge on it. That's just gone a little bit um, wet from sitting on the palette, on the, on the stay wet palette there. So I'm getting out a little bit more that's not so wet. It's a little bit thicker. I want to mix it with a little bit of the raw umber and some of the gel. And then I'm going to have another go with the palette knife, just trying to edge it. So there we can see the summit edge. That one's better. Let's try and do this one again. Here we go on this one. So I'm getting the sunlit side and down here it's going to be hard with this one because it's too long. So I'm going to sit those in there. I'm looking for a smaller edge and this one has a number of different edges so that smaller edge is going to be just right for down on this one. And then just down edge of this one. So there we are. I've got the edges, sunlit edges on there. I'm going to put in the slight tops on it as well, just using my small brush. Just catching the, the top of it, of each of those. Sunlit tops. I've got a little bit of wire to run along there, but I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. While I'm still doing this, I'm going to add in a few flicks of grass again there in a little bit to cover that mistake I made around the basis of those. So I've got the, the sunlit posts in now, just going down the hill, and now it's time for the uh, lighthouse over there. So, 
then I can use the edges of the palette knife for that. I, I want some white for the, the lighthouse. I'm running out of room there. It's not a very big uh, mixing area there, but that's okay because I've got the lid here and I'm going to do the, the lighthouse colour on there. I just want to make sure that this is nice and clean. I don't want to mix in dirty colours with it. So I'm going to have some white and I'm also going to have uh, a bit of blue mixed into it for the shadow side, a bluey colour, maybe a tiny touch of the purples in that as well, just getting it slightly off white, maybe a little bit more. And mix that up again and put more blue and purple in it. So what I end up with is a sunlit side, the middle side and then the shadowed side. So it's just going to be a purpley blue for the shadowed side. So that's my shadowed side. And Again, I'm just turning this around a little bit to put it in. Thinking about where it's going. It's going to go around about there. That's just the edge of it. It's got that little angle on it I want it to have. I don't actually think that's as dark as it should be. And what I'm going to actually do is put a tiny touch of just the tiniest touch of Naples yellow into the white for the sunlit side. I don't want it to be, do not want it to be entirely white. So the sunlit side is going to have a little bit of yellow mixed in it. And let's pop that in. I can't get my hand steady enough. So just going to use my brush there for a nice straight edge. And then I'm just mixing it in a bit to create the mid tones as it goes round. And there's a nice flat bit there and then the round bit on the top. So the rest of that's going in with a very small brush and I'm just Looking at the shape there and realising it's fatter here. It's not got a lot of lean on it, this one. And then around there will be fixing up the base just here where a sort of tree's coming over, and I don't want that to be all. white it off too much so just putting a little bit of those trees back in there. Okay. And as we come up here it has a little top round a bit. This is all quite round. Coming down. Ooh. 
them all around it on top. And I need to clean up the edges there because it's going to come down a little bit more. And then I'm going to clean up this side slightly too, just trim it off a little bit. And I can do that just with slightly wet detail brush here. That's what I'm doing. I just made it a little bit too high, but I can fix that. It's a wee bit too tall. And the way I'm going to fix that is to do again. Just bring this back here. I don't want that. That's going to all come off. And I'm going to put more grass in there. So, bringing the grassy area right around the base of there, and that has made it much more acceptable height. <laughs> it still has a lot of modelling to do with that, so what I need is to get some darker blue and just a little, little line under there little bits of shadow coming up just to start modeling that it has quite a dark little spot up in here where you can see through the light hole out to um, the sky and the ocean beyond on top and I want the rounded shape of it you might even find that you want a very 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 fine brush this is a very fine rigger brush here and I'm just going to dip it in some of the gloss medium and some of the brighter blue there to put in the little shadow marks there. And to bring the shadows down there. Kind of blends in a little bit with the sea behind it. And then the sunward side. Just putting in the little touches around here to make it the shape we want it to be. So looking quite lighthousey there.
got a bit of a curve which I don't want in it. So I'm just taking it out and straight down. You can fiddle around with this for ages. Honestly, you can. You just get so caught up in trying to make the detail right. And I know what's going wrong. I had that curve going the wrong way. So that has kind of made me feel a bit better about it. I'm losing the straight upness of it now, so that's not good either. You can just fiddle and fiddle and fiddle. Right now I'm flipping and slimming it down a bit. Quite easy to do again just with that wet brush, trimming up the sides like that. Just give it a clean off in between because it is much straighter than I've made it. What I've done is I've been taking, taking off the C there too, so now I have to pop that back in. And just get a little bit of that mixed up and do a repair job. So I'm just painting from the lighthouse out this way. Oh. I love the interactives but if you do get water on them it reactivates them and they then pull up what's underneath them. I'm just pulling that across a bit so it doesn't look like I've just added it on, which I have done. And then I'm going to work down this side with the same mixture, pulling it out this way. And that has slimmed it down. Then I need the grass to do a bit more slimming down Whereas as we hit the ah, turning it upside down to work from that side and you'll notice that the shadow side of the lighthouse is very similar in value to the sea behind it. Just have to get rid of that bit of white there. I'm just lightening it off a little bit up here. And running that across. So I want it to look like it is just running behind the, the lighthouse and I haven't just painted right up to the edge, which in fact I have done then. I'm just trying to get rid of that impression now. Oh, that's sitting a little bit better in there. I need to slim it down slightly as it hits the grass area. So again, I'm just taking a little bit of the grass and And slimming it down slightly. Ooh, got a bit of green on there, didn't I? Go back to my water brush. And 
and then it's a little bit thinner up here than I've got it again so what I'm going to do is just paint back into it with some of the sea colour I am honestly making it look harder than it is, folks. Then I just want to put the little rim effect on here. So I'm painting the little shadow under there. Oops. And like I said, painting smaller is not always easier because you've got these tiny little details you want to put in. And they have to be put in with a tiny little brush and getting them just right. Now that's made that look wonky. So just play around with it till it looks right. And this is not looking right because it's got to have a little curve on it. That's better. And then it should be a little <coughs> bit over here. We don't want to lose it coming back into the curve there and going quite Just those last touches. And then it has to have a little bit of shadow over on this side as, as well. Just putting a little tiny touch of that. Remember, I put that soft um, sort of glow in the sky back there. I'm just retouching that up. The horizon's not quite as straight as I want it to be, so I'm just touching that up again my little rigger brush and raising it all the way along there. It kind of blends into the storm clouds over here so it doesn't have to be perfect but it does need to be a little bit better than I've got it. Oh yeah and the more you keep working it <laughs> the more you keep making it uneven so now I'm just taking that bump out with a bit of storm cloud, evening it up a little bit there, and then working slightly back into that with some of that lighter colour. The only last thing to do is to put a bit of a, a green bush in front of the 
this part of the the lighthouse just to tie it into the landscape so making it quite dark there and that's the bushes in front of the the lighthouse there I still don't think that this side is dark enough of the lighthouse so some light that's better Leaning it off in between and then just taking a middle purpley sort of blue there to make the middle tones. I could keep going but I'm not. That's enough. It's the only other thing I might want to do is lighten up a couple of areas on there so what I'm doing is taking some of that Naples yellow a little bit of the white just so I've got a bit of a lighter colour than the Naples yellow that I had directly put on there uh, keep mixing it down a bit so it's quite light and just catch a few edges of it with the really light it's not going to be white I don't want it to be white but I do want it to be lighter and straight Naples yellow just to get the real effect of light on the edge and let it play out against the background there and as I come further forward here I'm not going to make that quite as bright as there uh, what else do I want to do really not much else except put in the tiny bits of wire and they're going to be put in with my very light rigger there and they're just going to be a tiny drag and I'm going to use this purpley blue colour just start down there and just gently drag it so that it doesn't pick up every little bit and I'm going to just put a few little dabs on it for the barbed wire that it, that it is. So by just letting it gently scoot across the surface I'm suggesting the light catching bits of it but not all of it. And I think it's just going to have the two rails on it. This one over here got a wee bit too thick. You wouldn't you wouldn't be able to see it that much down there. So I'll make it much, much thinner so you can hardly notice it and then dabbing in some of those um, light colours for the the bits of sunlight. Just dabbing them in again with the rigger here. Little bits of sunlight on some of those. bits of foliage there. Just a few. And 
and so I can finish up if I want to with a few little flicks of the very light here with my rigger brush. just to vary the foliage. And the one last thing I haven't remembered to do is to put some little uh, tree trunks in. I don't like that green. It's This is what happens when you look at it a bit. That green is far too much the wrong colour, so I'm just adding in a more of a reddy colour into the tops of it. And more blue colour into the darker areas. It was quite it's quite dark, you can see up against there. I'm actually going to add some of the purpley colours in as well. And I might add a few little sunlit bits to that one in front of it there, just a few little touches of some sunlit tops across here too. It does dry a little bit darker than you put it on, so you, if you want some uh, bits of sunlight on it, you've got to remember that it's going to dry slightly darker than you've put it on. So I'm going back in again with some, some little sun the tops. I'm adding those along there. And that's just Naples yellow with a little bit of um, the raw sienna from the sunlit tops of some of those little trees there. Just a, a hint of it back there. And the sea's got a bit flat and boring so I'm just putting a few stro strokes of different colours through it to stop it being quite so boring. Suggest so a little bit of tempestuousness out there. And these are the final things that you're looking for. Does everything seem as it should be? Do I need to add anything in? So here I'm just adding in a few A little bit of variation in the sea. I don't want to make it too much, just a, a little bit here and there. And there we have it. I'm going to stop fiddling with it and it's going to be to the Table Cape Lighthouse. Well, I just want to add in a little bit more sunlight over there. So I'm taking a knocking it back so it's not quite so green. It's more of the summery colour. That's better. Okay, stop fiddling. There we have it. That's from the black and white photo using some of the colour out of here, but also referring back to my colour notes here.
I've got a nice feeling of the storm, but a little of the sun there. I've got some of the sunlit grasses and the darker meadows behind it. The sunlit edges to the fence, and here I've got shadows across the path, and a lot of variation within the vegetation. But also, it's looking very natural. I don't have uh, any bright colours in there. It's all muted, sort of greyed off greens. A little bit of something's bothering me there. That's my last fix-up. promise that's my last fix-up. It's just a little bit too light there, so I'm giving that a little bit of a swipe. That's better. Okay, now you just have to decide where you're going to sign it. And for me, it's going to be signed over there. And how am I going to sign it? I'm going to use a little bit of the light Naples yellow. And um, I'm going to use this Naples yellow and raw sienna mix. I don't want it too yellow. So I'm just knocking it back with the um, with the raw sienna, so it's not bright yellow. And I'm just going to put my little signature here in the corner. Some of the flow medium here, the gloss medium, will help it flow on better. And it's quite hard to sign something that's small without making your signature too big. And just wipe a little bit of the paint off there. So the signature matches these other colours in here, so it tones in, but it stands out on the dark background. There we go. We've finished. I finished that little painting now, and I just wanted to recap how I went about um, deciding on the composition. I had been out, done some sketching storm clouds came in, couldn't finish the painting outside. So I brought the sketches home with the little colour notes I'd made on there and a couple of photos I had. I've also got this black and white one and I'd lost the um, colour version of it. I had some problems with my laptop and I lost that. So I've just got the black and white but that served as a, a value study for it so that worked out quite well. What I wanted to do was to capture more the, the colours that I remembered from the place rather than the colours in these photos. Some of the colours in these photos were fine, they were what I remembered, others were a bit too bright and green, so I've changed them around a little bit. I wanted this, these colours out of this sketch, um, I wanted that composition, and I wanted to remember, because I can't see it here, that the storm clouds were rolling in and I could remember that from being at the place. So I made the little painting here, and as I talked about earlier, I've just used a store-bought frame from one of the chain stores. Um, in this case it was Spotlight. I've taken out the glass and just slotted the backing in, the backing that I prepared earlier with the clear coats of PVC glue to stop the bleed through from the wood discolouring it, and then a couple of coats of the gesso. Hope you enjoyed that demo. I enjoyed doing that little painting. And I hope that you remember, if you can't finish your paint air painting outside, at least do some sketches and some value maps, uh, some colour notes, so that when you come home, you can remember the scene as it was. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.